So Coach Jesse, I'm so excited you are here. I'm always having to fight and defend women and our health, women's health by myself. So it's so good to have you on today. Thank you for being a guest on Street Politicians. Thank you so much for having me. Listen, you got a circle with you. You're not by yourself. We got we got your back. Got your back. Well, I don't understand this because I'm always outnumbered on this show. Is is we got woman producers. We got her. She's like five women alone. So she right. makes me feel like she needs. I need the help. Here. No, we you have know? been on this show often. By the way, I mean, yeah, okay, I guess. It's, but get, it's getting more balanced. It's getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming on, Coach Jesse. And thank, thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. So grateful. So, Coach Jesse, before you came on, we were talking about women's coochies, right? She was talking about it. I was and you had things to say. I had a couple of things, but did, <laughs> let's make it clear because I do not need. She <laughs> no, and you know, it's such taboo, right? It's yes, such taboo. Yeah. It's not taboo because everyone is using one or mm -hmm. or some way one in one way or the other. Either come in here, like how you are born into the world, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. or um, you know, or and or actually in having sexual interactions or whatever, mm -hmm. or using it as a woman's on your body but we don't like to talk about it. It's taboo to discuss the topic. And I think that because it's taboo, you have so many things going wrong and ways in which we are not taking care of the health of our vaginas because we don't talk about it. And I was, the conversation that we were having, I was asking my son, like, who taught you what? And like, what did they say? What's the words they used? And where did you get most of your information growing up? Because I feel like so many young men, even my own son, I don't know if I had the right conversations with him. So what's your take on that topic? Well, I love what you said about, you know, when people don't talk about things, you know, things go wrong. And, you know, I heard, you know, grandma used to say bad things happen in the dark, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the dark is really, it's ignorance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we do, you know, we have to come out of that that time in our lives where it was like, well, this is taboo because taboo is what made it shameful. Mm -hmm. It's what made it something that we, we remained ignorant about and we didn't communicate where we had issues. I think it's very important that sexual education, menstrual education, um, mm -hmm. sexual health education, anatomy is taught with your sons and your daughters the same, okay? Because we are our community, our family, our family unit, whether it's father, mother, whoever is having those conversations, we need to know that um, it needs to be brought into the light, right? Because mm -hmm. when we bring things to the light, then we can see what's really happening. We can feel open about having conversations. It's like when people see a little girl say vagina, like, yes, let her say vagina. Thank mm -hmm. you. She has- So not JJ. So you not you don't think JJ and poo poo and tutu and all of that, we shouldn't be using those- Time. So there's a lot of debate around that, right? Um, you know, I, I don't mind saying the JJ because it's like we have a cute nickname for a lot of things, right? However, but she should always know vagina and she should not feel ashamed of saying vagina, right? Mm -hmm. Because it needs to be taken care of just like every other part of us. And mm -hmm. because there's so much that so much havoc that can be wreaked, whether it's conditions, disease, infections, if we are not um, really intentional about care, mm. intentional about how we talk about it and uh, making sure that the awareness and the education is accurate. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Marcia. For me, you know, and I appreciate this conversation, but as, <laughs> as a man throughout years, you know, I don't think a lot of women are aware of the hygiene of the vag vagina. Like, the vag. The, the, vag. Vag. <laughs> the vagina. Like a lot of there's there are, there are a lot more women who don't smell fresh than actually do. And I, I'm just trying to figure out like why what like what does that come from? What is what does that mean? And do they even know? It's like for me, I think a lot of them and they don't seem to be aware. You know, and it's not like they children, these are grown women. They don't really seem to be aware. 
So I'm trying to figure out like, what does that come wow. from? How do we combat it? Like, what, what is what's going on for men everywhere? We want to know. But that's that takes us to what you was talking about the care because you see things like men that don't realize that before they have oral sex with a woman, they need to brush their teeth. They need to wash their hands after like. Things get annoying, but if you're holding your cell phone and you're handling your keys, so after you wash your hands, if you pick up your cell phone that hasn't been clean, and then you want to put your hand in a woman's vagina, that's how these odors and other things happen. So it's got to be, if you're having sex with people or a person, that person has to be as informed, I would think about things that they need to do so that you're helping one another. But there are other reasons. So you go yeah, ahead. And, for me, and I, I wanted to say one thing. For me. <laughs> Sorry. The guest, yeah. We don't have a guest on this show No, today. no, no. I'm going to get to that. But I just want to say just to combat that because I have all of those things you're talking about throughout my life. I didn't do it with certain women. Right. And they still weren't. They didn't smell. Like I didn't wash my hand every time. I didn't brush my. I didn't do all of those things. And they still didn't smell. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if that is the, the direct correlation to it we'll or not. We'll so I will let the expert talk. Yes. And then I got something to say. <laughs> well, I have one word that's very important. Well, two of them actually. Food and stress. Okay. So two things that really impact our pH balance. Um, and pH balance affects what you're talking about, my brother, my son. Okay. My son, when you're talking about everything from the the odor, the stickiness, the texture. Um, these things are affected by our food, what we consume, and um, our stress is affected by what we consume mentally and emotionally, right? So think about that. Um, when you are having high cortisol levels, and, and I say this because a lot of brothers are why a lot of women are stressed, okay? <laughs> all right? Some of these toxic relationships, mm -hmm. all right? So let's look at both sides of the net. Of course, you know, and, and we have to love ourselves enough to keep toxic relationships out. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also what we're consuming food-wise. Mm -hmm. It can throw off our pH balance. That's a big thing, okay? And it, a sugar is a big deal because it causes a, an overgrowth of candida, all right? A lot of times we, going back to the stress thing, what we eat to try to comfort ourselves, we eat things that are bad for us, mm -hmm. things that are bad for our bodies. And then the other thing are the soaps, okay? It's very important that we use things that are friendly to the cookie, friendly to the cookie all right um i say that because I, I have a daughter she's 11 and i'm already having her say no 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 we don't use soap if you don't have soap you don't have a good a good wash that is um that supports your overall body ph just use water right because the soap will create all kinds of other habit all right so and gut health is very connected to it as well my son so that goes back to the food because if your microbiome is imbalanced which is your gut health it will wreak havoc. And that's where you have things like BV and yeast and all those things. I hope yeah. that helps. I was just going to say though, that it's true that some people you don't have to do it. Some people just don't have those issues. Mm -hmm. Other people do. But I think also the thing that, and maybe the odor is one part, but one thing that we were already talking about earlier, my son, is a lot of women don't even tell you about the discomfort that they're experiencing. Mm. So you don't even know that something is going on, except if there is an odor, like that's at the point that it's at its worst where you will actually hear about it. But the yep. burning sensation, the itchiness and other things, you won't even know what's going on. And we will just hide it because in our minds, we're wired to think we have to please our man and have sex even when we're uncomfortable. Preach. Oh, <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's very unfortunate because just listening to me, and I don't even understand how women enjoy these. Like this mind state, that a lot of women go into relationships with is it's it doesn't even seem enjoyable. Like you saying, we, we you talking about you gotta please the man, you gotta have sex when you're uncomfortable, you you can't say things about this, you you not really like she she was expressing earlier that a lot of women aren't having orgasm. Like I don't even know why somebody would if if I if, if sex was like that to me, if I, if it was taught that to me and I had to deal with, I just wouldn't even want to do it. Cause I don't even, I don't even, for me, it's like, what is, what, how do you enjoy it when you have all of these things that you actually dealing with that actually take you away from you? Not even climaxing most of the time. You're not comfortable. You're going through this, 
Well, I don't know. Like, what, what is what is the good part about it? Well, that presupposes that you're able to have a healthy relationship, right? So if you have a healthy relationship, then you can talk about these things, right? right? I have a safe relationship where I I'm able to be vulnerable. I am healthy in, in our, our communication level is healthy where I, we can talk about those things that we kind of feel very, um, very insecure about. Mm -hmm. But now take it on the flip side where a woman is really just hungering for security. Um, what's on the flip side of what you talked about, my son, right? So if I say I'm uncomfortable, if I say I'm not happy, if I say all these things, there's a culture out there that somebody's gonna be like, I'm going on to the next person. Mm -hmm. Are you too much to handle, right? Or this is too much drama. Um, and I think there's a lot of fear that's connected to it. And that to me goes back to the toxicity of, wait a minute, you know, my intimacy is very special. And that means I only want to have it in a relationship where somebody is, is safe enough where I can say, this is cool. This is not cool. I'm going through something. I'm, I'm going through a health challenge and you're, I'm not afraid that you're going to walk away. And that starts with valuing ourselves enough to say that I deserve that, yeah. right? I how, deserve. Much of this, how much of this do you think is like grandma and them fault? And, you know, great grandmama's fault because we have been taught to please our yeah. man and don't worry about you getting pleased because that's not important. Sex is really about a woman giving a man what he needs. So how much of it do you think is just what we've been taught being, you know, it's just wrong. Like some, and I know it because I heard plenty of that as a young person growing up. And the sad part about it, Coach Jesse is, you hardly heard anything because it was all the secrets going on in the room when they closed the door and they sat in there and talked, the women and the men definitely didn't bring it up because if they talked to you about anything sexually related, that was a family crisis. So the only time you did hear something was when a person was telling you what you need to do for your man or how you, that's it. Like you didn't really get any real sex education until you had your menstrual. That's it. And of like, course, the soap thing. Yes. Forever, we <laughs> learned about soap because all of us use the wrong soap at least once and it set you on the on fire. On fire. <laughs> so what do you think? How how much of it is our training from our older, you know, grandparents, specifically grandmothers? Mm, absolutely. Um, you hit the nail right on the head. Okay. Because generationally, you know, think about it. even in the church, we were taught that, you know, that men need sex, but women, you know, you need affection, right? Mm -hmm. And affection is not, that doesn't mean you need, you need sexual pleasure. And that sets you apart me thinking like, okay, so it's not really about me being happy sexually. It's about him being happy sexually. That's the wrong path. Right. And then it was like, well, you know, you got to please, like you said, grandma, you got to please your man. You got to please your spouse. You got to please your partner. But what about my needs. So we have been conditioned incorrectly. We've been conditioned to not even think about that our needs in that regard and how they need to be met and how we need to actually have a value for our own sexual pleasure and health, our, you know, our own enjoyment, right? That's a big deal. So when we were growing up, like you just said, only taught, oh, oh, you're getting to be a woman now. You got your cycle. What does that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that's because you could get pregnant now. Okay. So it was not about, you know, what that journey looks like, what that journey can look like. It was about what to protect you from. Mm. That was the condition, right? So it was very fear-based. It wasn't based around possibility. It mm. wasn't, it wasn't based around you know, the kind of life you want to build and you want to actually create for yourself and it being a duality of both sides. So I think it's time out. Like, you know, it, it is time out for those kind. There are things that traditions that are great. And then there are traditions that we need to throw out just like the ham hocks. Ooh, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, so we skipped straight <laughs> into this. We didn't even, you know, we didn't get into you. Like what, what made you want to become a woman's health activist? Like what was your journey? Ooh, um, I like to say I, you know, I became a women's health activist because I went through my own crisis. Um, I, you know, at the age of 30, I, um, 20 years ago, I wanted to, um, yeah. My dad. Yeah. Heard from crap. Jeez. Awesome. <laughs> As Yandy likes to say, if you take care of it, though. <laughs> I know. That's right. 
Um, so hubby and I, you know, we've been married four years and we were like, it's time to, to, to grow our family. And, um, 30 years old, I was like, I'm feeling right. This is good. And we tried to conceive six months down the road, nothing's happening. Um, and I learned at that point when I went to the GYN that I was one of the 90% of black women battling fibroids by age 50. Now I didn't know it was a pandemic. I just happened to know I had fibroids at that time. I didn't know what that meant, but that precipitated a journey of um, what I called my million dollar baby journey because those fibroids that I battled for 14 years mm. actually caused infertility for 10 years. Mm. Okay? Mm. Infertility for 10 years, which required me to have five IVF cycles. I know you hear the cash register ringing when I say in vitro fertilization, because mm. that's like $20,000 a pop, right? Easily. And um, in the middle of that, a miscarriage, mm. which was devastating. Um, and being hospitalized for more than 100 plus days combined. Um, and even when we finally were con you know, conceived the, with the, the fifth IVF cycle, um, we thought everything was fantastic. It was great. This was it. God had answered our prayers. Um, at 21 weeks, I find out that the fibroids have returned. And I had just had a myomectomy six months before this, not even, um, which was my third fibroid surgery. The fibroids had returned. And now were, my baby was fighting for her life for the fibroids. Mm. And they told me that literally the doctor said to me, you might want to consider terminating this pregnancy. Mm. That took us 10 years to get, okay? 10 years to get to that point. And you know, uh, Tamika, I know, you know, I said, I, you know, I, we're people of faith and we're not giving up on this pregnancy. I said, no, no, we, it took okay, us too hold, hold it right there. Quick, uh, important question. And I don't mean to stop your story, but this is- No, question. please. Did you have a moment of feeling like you were going to lose your husband because you couldn't make this happen? Did you go through that or were you good, solid? So great question. Um, at the fourth IVF cycle, after it, now my husband was incredibly supportive. Shout out Mark Thompson. Um, uh, and he was always, you know, man of faith, very supportive, always there. After our fourth IVF cycle, which was a failure, like I hit a wall and I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I, I can't do this anymore. And he doubled down on the support. Mm. He, opposite, he was like, listen. And he didn't, cause I felt at that need to make it, you know what you were saying? Like, I have to give him a child. Like, you know, that pressure. He was like, no, no. I said, what do you, I said, I said, let's pray. What, what is God telling you? Cause right now I don't even want another surgery. I don't want to, like, I was like, I want to adopt. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. if I have another surgery, it's going to be all kinds of complications. And he was like, no, no. He said, babe, I'm not going to tell you what God said to me. He said, because this is your body. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray and you decide and whatever you choose, I'm rolling with that. Cause this is your life that's on the line. And, you know, I, that, that level of support and respect for me was huge. And I needed it because at the end of the day, I needed to know that that decision was not because I was trying to please him, right? Mm -hmm. That I knew that it was part of my destiny. Wow. So grateful. But I know I have a lot of clients, though, who have lost their spouses in the infertility journey. I have a lot of clients who have, you know, have, have been down that road and struggled in it. You know, I literally just had a client tell me the other day, she's having her third miracle baby. And right now the marriage is in crisis. Mm. So continue on, you, you, you went through your process. Yes. Okay. So, but thank, so, you know, so we went through the process of, you know, I said, no, we're not giving up. And they hospitalized me. I was in the hospital and they said, oh my God, you're not going to make it 72 hours. We're going to have to do an emergency C-section. This is, this is, this is a horrible because it went worse. Long story short, eight weeks later to the tune of eight weeks later, because of a God, a miracles, God, miraculous God that I serve, right. That I was on the operating table. Cause they said, we're going to do a C-section. This is time. Now the baby's actually healthy enough to come out and um, my heart stopped on the operating table and all I know, I heard them say, Mrs. Thompson, you're, you know, we have to put you under cause something's wrong. 
And I met, I learned the next day that I had a little girl. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank God I lived to see it. Um, I was what you call a near miss, not a mortality in black maternal health, thank God. Um, But I had a little girl named Nia Thompson who was born at two and a half pounds, incredible. So my journey, I I like to say when, when I birthed her, she birthed me into this work. She birthed me into this purpose because I had no idea. God turned my test into a testimony because Essence published a, a profile of my story. It went viral. And all of a sudden, women all around the world telling me, oh, my God, your story has given me hope. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm in this phase of the cycle. So that now made me say, wait a minute. I thought this was my hell, my own personal hell. But then I learned it was a pandemic. I learned it literally was affecting up to 90% of Black women. And, um, and then I became um, an, an advocate and an activist because I said, wait a minute, you know, we can't be alone. I, I started mm-hmm. off saying, God, we just can't be alone. We can't be uh, uh, silent and, and um, you know, suffering and silent. And that's really what sparked me on this journey to becoming a, an author and eventually founding our, our online women's health platform called the detoxnow.com. Tell us, you know, we, we talked about one aspect of, you know, uh, the, a big thing that I think everybody can enjoy that conversation and learn something from it when we talk about women's coochies. Absolutely. But there's, so much, there's so many other things happening with us from a health perspective. What would you say are some of the, the what, what are you talking to your clients about the most, especially in our age demographic? which would be somewhere probably from maybe 25 to 55. Mm-hmm. In there, what are some of the things that you're talking to us about? Yeah, I love that question. So, you know, first of all, you know, first give an honor to Tamika Mallory, because I have to say you inspired us. <laughs> um, you know, you know, your book, State of Emergency, um, really inspired my current campaign that we just launched. It's a PSA called, you know, My Estrogen, my body, my choice, and it's all about the Black women's health, Black women's health state of emergency. Mm-hmm. And the reason we're focusing on that is because we need to know what's going on with our estrogen. Estrogen is connected to, um, if estrogen is too high or it's too low, it's connected to so many conditions and how it's affecting our body. And then what choices we have available to us because Black women's health is in a state of emergency. We are suffering. <sighs> We are infertile, as I mentioned. We are dying, especially specifically Black women. You have women who are dealing with, when I talk about the suffering, you know, women's pain. We just talked about it from women being little girls. Our pain is normalized, all right? Our pain is normalized, and we're taught that it's you're you're bleeding heavy, you're having heavy cramping, you're having heavy heavy pain. Um, That's normal. And because we're told it's normal and there's so many studies that say our pain is dismissed, which is why it leads to um, women dying, right? Women being diagnosed too too late, right? Um, And so we're talking about the fact that, hey, if you're in pain, you're suffering, that's not okay, right? Let us, first of all, let's turn around and say, you know what, the echo chamber that says from the the dominant voices of the physicians and the family members that say it's okay that you're in pain, that it's normal for black women to be in pain. Let's counter that echo chamber and say, no, let's actually normalize balance. Let's normalize health. Let's normalize, normalize healing. And that starts by saying, wait a minute, what is my pain telling me, right? When we look at the statistics specifically, 19% of black women, as I mentioned, up to 90% of women Black women have fibroids by age 50, right? You know the symptoms that are associated with that. Then you have 19% of Black women are dealing with infertility. Leading causes of infertility are fibroids, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have endometriosis and PCOS. Um, Black women are, I I mentioned earlier, three times more likely, okay, to have fibroids and up to 90% dealing with them. Um, 90% dealing with infertility. And then when it comes to cancer, African-American women, we have the highest mortality rate at 31%, okay? So we're suffering, we're infertile, and we're dying, and it's time to stop. Mm. So for us, it's, you know what? Let's first of all, expose the fact that it's not okay. Mm. We're suffering, mm. right? Because it's, we're told it's normal, just shut up. If you, you go to the doctor, oh, your pain is normal. It's just menstrual pain. No, but you know what? 
fast forward, do you know that that cycles that are that are heavy, very painful, if they are un, um, untreated um, and you're not dealing with the root issue, there's studies now that are even indicating that when women get into peri perimenopause, and you talked about that age, that those fibroids can actually lead to other cancers or actually become cancerous. Wow. And I've women- never, I've never heard that. It is a you big You know what else deal. I've never heard? I, have, I Well, I know now. But when I was young, no one ever told us that the menstrual cycle was a cleansing period. I didn't know anything about it. I just thought we had the curse of death that you just bled and it was basically associated with you getting pregnant and that's it. So the, that's it. I didn't know anything about the fact that your body was actually cleansing itself and pumping yes. out things that was, you know, no good. Oh, I guess the oxygen in the blood, something about that. I, I heard something and I still don't know. <laughs> All the details, so no. but I know you're getting cleaned up. So, so what's happening is your body prepares for, once you have your cycle, your body prepares for the ability to um, conceive every month, okay? And if you don't conceive, then it tears down, it sheds that lining mm -hmm. every month, okay? So that is a cleansing. And what's happening though is when there is irregular cycles, mm -hmm. there is a when I talked about you know, estrogen being imbalanced and what that means is estrogen is either too high or it's too low, okay? Mm -hmm. If estrogen is dominant, it leads to conditions like fibroids, like PCOS. It's, it's, um, it's instrumental in terms of setting the stage for the development of these conditions, as well as um, even infertility issues, um, thyroid issues, weight gain. A lot of women see weight gain and they just think they don't realize it's actually connected to a hormone imbalance, okay? They don't realize that it's telling them something. So we're wanting to educate women that your pain, your symptoms are actually telling you something. And you know it's time to actually listen to them because otherwise you're now gonna be having these conditions at a more advanced levels. And then when estrogen is too low, it's associated with things like osteoporosis and mm. heart and heart issues, right? Um, for my women who are in perimenopause stage or women who've had are in menopause where their estrogen is even lower, right? Because of that, they are at high risk of osteoporosis. How do you check so, your estrogen level? You, it's a blood test. You get your doctor, but then remember, so there's the blood test, but your body is the first test. That's what we want to equip our women to know, right? What is my body telling me, all right? So the first education is your cycle is supposed to be normal. That means three, what is a normal cycle? Three to five days of bleeding, all right? You're supposed to, according to the um, Office of Women's Health, the National Institute of Health, you're only supposed to bleed about three to five tablespoons of blood, okay? And it's supposed to be just discomfort, not heavy pain, okay? So, and I know we see this, our clients, when they're on the other side, we see the happy period. All right. They so live the clots, in happy period. So the, are the clots not, not that you're not supposed to have clotting? Mm -mm. That's only if your body is going through something and it's telling you something. There's either an abundance of estrogen. Your body is, it's absolutely not part of a normal cycle, right? So that's telling you something. See, you just said, is, is clotting not normal? No, it's not part of a normal cycle, right? So understanding if it's abnormal, let's look at and let's value our voices because something inside is, is telling you this ain't right, you know, I, I, when, 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 but, but you're being countered. Remember those, that echo chamber I talked about? You're being countered by an echo chamber that says, oh, if it's not bothering you, don't bother it. Or, oh, no, that's, you just, you know, black women just bleed heavy. Or no, you just have painful cycles. So you ignore it. And I like to say, if we don't listen to our pain, our pain when it is a whisper, it will become a scream that literally uproots and it disrupts our lives, right? So, that's really important for us to become educated about it. And when we become educated about it, to know that we have solutions. Because the other thing we're told, why are Black women the first three, we are the highest recipients of hysterectomies. Mm -hmm. Three to four times more likely. I was talking to a young woman, 25 years old, right? She's, her testimony is incredible. And the other thing we did as part of this campaign, we did an audit of several testimonies. And oh my God, I can't wait. You know, we're posting them on the, they're, they're actually on the website. They're going to be amazing in terms of supporting women. Because what we said is we have to put out stories that for people to actually hear that possibility of having a balanced life, mm -hmm. that it, there's something possible outside of the hysterectomy you're told you're supposed to have, or the birth control they tell, they tell you you have to be on for non-contraceptive reasons. 
that actually lead to these other conditions because they cause estrogen dominance, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're not told these things, right? So she was told at 25 years old, she was very small, but all, all five, big fibroids. She had a fibroid, the, she had fibroids with a belly about six months in size of, of a six month pregnancy. And they were like, you know what? You can't do anything to it. They didn't tell her any lifestyle changes. They didn't tell her anything she had in her power to do with it. And then the conversely, I have I have um, clients who right away they look at you and say, "Oh, you know, you're in your forties. Just go ahead and have hysterectomy. Don't care if you're if you have planning." And it's not even just about having a baby, Tamika. It's because that organ is vital to your hormonal health, mm. your uterus. Let's dismiss this idea that if you don't want to have children it's okay to remove your uterus mm. because your uterus is so critical to your your body's overall hormonal health which literally triggers and controls everything going on in your body that it will literally disrupt everything and wow. then you're trying to play catch up right so for us it's educating women that you don't have to live like that you don't have to live like that. There are other options or surgery. You don't have to, if you want to have surgery, that's up to you. But you also want to think about the root things that are in your control. I think it's up to 7% of conditions and diseases. Only 7% are actually um, uh, driven by genetics. Mm. That means like 93% we have control of because it's social determinants. It is things like our nutrition. It's things like our stress levels, right? Our safety, our security. It's those things, access to care, access to health care. okay? Those are things that affect our, our overall health and our condition. So it's, it's providing solutions, providing education. That's the conversation we're having. That's the conversation we're looking to normalize balance. We're looking to normalize balance. So- just listening to you, you know, it's, it's so much that we just don't know, right? Yeah. And so, like, what are the what are the foods? Like, I know I know that you're vegan. So, what do you mm -hmm. do the, the dangerous foods that intake that women are intaking that are detrimental to their bodies and to their health? Okay, great question. Um, because I think that's one of the biggest um, hurdles is the food, right? Food will be your medicine, or it will be your poison. Um, and I want to start by dismissing the idea that the only way you can have a healthy diet is to be vegan, all right, or to be plant-based, because it really is, it depends on the severity of your condition. It depends on what your condition is, right? And then there's, this is for me, is take steps towards health. So there are things that the, the um, when you talk about like the biggest culprits, the biggest culprits are going to be um, things that are like soy-based um, meats that are, um, you know, if you're going to have meat, you want to make sure it's grass fed organic. Um, if you're going to have meat, but then if you're dealing with fibroids, understand it's going to fuel them. Okay. Um, then there's dairy. Dairy is a huge one because of how it, it feeds, um, inflammation. It fuels inflammation. It fuels and that, it, that, that, fibroids and those kind of conditions are inflammatory conditions. Um, alcohol is a big one. Uh, I, it's, it's a big one because a lot of people, that's their panacea. It's how it's, it's what they soothe themselves with. So minimizing that. Um, and then, so I said dairy, I said meat, I said alcohol. Uh, and the other thing is gluten. Gluten is huge and gluten is in so many things from breads to pastas. It's, a, it's an ingredient that a lot of people are learning about now because there's this whole gluten-free movement. But gluten is, is, it really disrupts our gut health and our gut is like the center of our overall health, okay? So when you talk about like things that are, will help, cruciferous vegetables are really important. So I say to people, you know, it's not about doing everything all at once, unless you're in a crisis. So the people that come to us, my son, they're in a crisis. They're like, I need help right now. I'm real, I'm real cold turkey, literally. Help me because I'm drowning, right? Then they'll do like our water fast. They'll do our balance program and that's fine. But some people who is like, that's just looking to try to make changes because it's more of a, of a gradual thing adding more cruciferous vegetables into your diet, like bok choy, like broccoli, right? Like, um, you know, purple cabbage and, and kale and um, these things, having more of them and not, you know, drowned in grease and devoid of nutrients, 
but having those more in your diet will help. And, and, and if you're going to have meat, make it a smaller portion of your food and more of the vegetables, right? More of the fruits and vegetables that are going to help you overall. And then making sure that um, when it comes to your, you know, caffeine levels, people, some people love coffee, but caffeine is one of those things that fuels um, estrogen as well. It's highly estrogenic. So maybe for you, it, it, there have been people who they said to me, oh my God, it felt like my firebirds went you know, they grew like on steroids recently. And we said, okay, so let's take a look at what's, what's, what have you been consuming? Oh my God, I've been working so hard. I've been drinking a lot of coffee because I need to stay up or whatever it may be that's been going on in their lifestyle. And it's been traced to that, you know what I mean? Because caffeine can be, so it can, it has some health benefits. However, it also, if you're estrogen dominant, which your estrogen level is too high, it can cause um, that, the fueling of those conditions. Yeah, last, last night I had a terrible eat night. Like I had some, what was it? Steak and cheese egg roll thing. That <laughs> so good, so good. Um, and so it was just a, a bad night because I'm not supposed to be eating much cheese. Yeah. I've been told to stick to like feta and other sort of cheeses like that, but I'm not allowed to have like cheddar and mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. of that nature because of cholesterol. And the food is hard. You know, the food is hard, especially for us because I've watched, especially my son, he only eats, um, what, what is your thing? Are you a vegetarian or? I'm not a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian. 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 I, I tried every now and then I might eat a little bit of chicken, but I don't eat beef or any other meat mm -hmm. at all. That's good. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but it's hard to find things like I watch him struggle wanting to do right, like trying. He doesn't he would never eat any trash at all, period, except mm -hmm. the fact that you're somewhere and there's nothing. And it's like, what do you eat, especially when you're arriving at 10 o'clock at night? And the only thing that's available is like the you know, the, 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 what do you call those wings, the hot wings, or, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's just like all this there. And now that I'm trying to eat better, since I got this really bad cholesterol report back from my um, physical is mm -hmm. I find myself really struggling. Like, okay, there's pizza. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's, there are things with all the things that I'm not supposed to be eating everywhere. Mm -hmm. Butter, butter is in everything. Yep. It's used, you know, so often, um, you know, just like all the stuff, you know, the things. So I don't have to explain it. And it is really hard. And I try to eat because Queen of Fua told us have two salads per day. So yes. I'm like mm -hmm. trying to get into the salad thing. But even finding a good salad can be difficult. Yeah, yeah it's, you know? I'm not going to. It. So part of it is, you know, this is why, you know, the, the number one thing you can do is obviously prepare your meals at home. However, everybody doesn't have that, you know, right. and, and I'm not somebody who just loves to cook all the time. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. we have an amazing, you know, recipe guy. We partnered with a great chef. You know, it's our end fibers recipe guy. We partnered with uh, Chantel Let's Be Vegan to make easy and delicious recipes for people who are going to prepare them at home. But when you're on the road. Yeah. For me, it's it's let's dismiss this idea that if it doesn't have meat or or uh, these other conditions that it's not food. Because a lot of times you can find, like for me, if I go somewhere, I'm looking for the fruits, I'm looking for the veggies. Um, and, and my concept is that is a meal, right? So if I, if I think about it that way, if you go to eat at a restaurant, they're gonna have some grilled veggies, they're gonna have steam, they're gonna have something available, right? Something. Um, something. Then are you hungry afterwards? I mean, listen, we got to let you go because we, we just going to keep talking and talking and talking, but are you hungry? Do you find yourself still being hungry after or you're Not feeling satisfied? No. Uh, so number one, the other thing is steamed brown rice. Brown rice is very accessible. Um, and I, you know, that's a good source of protein. So you want to make sure you have a good source of protein, like something like a brown rice, like quinoa, the, there are foods available. And, and the biggest thing is this, that if we're looking for it, and if we decide that, you know what, my health, let's go back to that state of emergency, right? When we say balance is possible, it starts by saying prioritizing my health. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get balanced until I prioritize my health, right? Those who are in the dominant culture are not going to give up power until they understand that, you know what, it's going to be taken from me. I don't want my life taken from me because I'm not taking care of my health. 
So I have to decide that, you know what, come hot, no matter what, right now, this is what's most important. Right. And for us, you know, the other thing is we, we create supplements. Like we have a, our, our Balance Daily Plus Mask Kit, which is a women's health reproductive program that helps to restore hormonal balance, um, to improve menstrual cycles, to promote healthy weight, which is really important, as well as prevent those, helps your body to do these things. Making sure you're getting the right supplements is really important. Maybe you can't do everything with your diet, but let's start by making sure you have the right supplements. Because we have, we've seen women who, because they were starting to feel, oh my God, my cycle is better. And I just started taking the supplements. And then, oh my God, I feel so good now that I'm more encouraged to, to take down. better care to of myself. Down. You see what I'm saying? And we've seen it over and over that once they, they have that support and they start to feel what it's like to feel amazing, that you know they'll be like, oh my God, now I am willing to, to go that extra mile. Like when they do our water fast, right? Which may be a, a part of, they may start their balance that part. They're like, oh my God, I can't eat for 14 days. It's a water fast. And I say this because a lot of times we think we're about to die, Tamika and my son. But the truth is we're really just thirsty. We think we're so hungry, but our bodies are saying, no, you know what? You're really just thirsty because the body, it, it, it experiences dehydration and hunger the same. And I say that because sometimes we'll reach for something that's bad for us to eat because we think we're about to pass out. But what the body's actually telling you, oh, you really just need some coconut water. Oh, you really just need some water. And you would be surprised if you took your supplements, if your water, you may have, a, you may have time to get to that next spot or have a little bit more planning time to say, let me get something that's healthier to eat. That's a wow. critical piece. But if you don't have the support and the understanding and the education. And the knowledge, the knowledge. Yes, so important. yes, yes. I just want to thank you so much for your time. And you're, you're so clear, you know, oftentimes people say they're experts in certain areas and it's difficult to understand <laughs> what they're, um, you know, what they know. Uh, but it's not that way with you. You're very, very clear. And I feel, I definitely learned from this conversation. And I think the main thing that is so important is talking about these issues from nuts to bolts and not making it a backroom conversation between a few women, but ensuring that our men are a part of it. Because, hey, when we're out to eat, a man can look over at his wife and say, hey, you've had four drinks this week or, you know, tonight, maybe, you know, we shouldn't do that because we need to preserve your health. Hey, let's not eat this today. Hey, let's do, you know, do different things because sometimes you do need a partner to help you out and to have somebody that's in your health journey with you. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it, either you want to live or you don't. And that's what oh. I'm beginning to realize. Yes, ma'am. You got to do it. So I can make all the excuses. I can't find this. I don't like this, that, and the third. Or I can order that salad with my little scallops on the side and mix it all up together and enjoy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I could share this, most, many women who found our program, they found it because some of their, either their husbands or their boyfriends found it and said, you know what? Check this out. Mm. So I want to shout out, there are men out there that are looking for, and they actually have turned around and the ones who've had miracle babies or whatever, it's because they did get in the trenches and do the program with them, right? Or they said, you know, if this is all you're going to eat, this is all we're going to eat as a family. So shout out to the, the brothers and the family members that, who are supporting and saying, you know what, our health is going to, let's make generational health mm. our focus, right? Let's normalize this idea that our real wealth is our health first, because you can't enjoy any of the physical wealth if you're not healthy, if you're not here, right? Yeah. And, and understand that balance is possible. It really is. Uh, we're here for you. Please take advantage of our free, our, our free um, weekly group consults, whatever you're dealing with. We want you to know you're not alone. That's yeah, the bottom tell, line. Tell us where we can get in touch with you to get your products, because you have all these products that they need for their health you know what i'm saying and they need your coaching like tell us how do we get you we need you thank you so much um well you know for us it's people over profits and that means we make things available at every level wherever you are and that starts off with our free weekly group consult so please contact us at the detoxnow.com 
Um, we're I'm Coach Jesse, Coach G E S S I E on IG. I'm very active. Um, the website you can get your free free food list. You can get your um, your group consult, or you can book a private one. And this is important because that's where it starts, right? It starts by looking at your case and saying, "Hey, what are your goals? What's going on? How can we help you?" And then we have a community. You know, my company name, the legal name is Detox Living because we're calling people to a life of what we call detox living, which is life free of toxic thoughts, people, habits, and foods, right? Yeah. And that is what we're offering you at thedetoxnow.com. All right. Well, once again, we want to thank you. You have been very informative. You do not look a day over 31. <laughs> um, hopefully. 51, yes. You know what I'm saying? So 51 is amazing. But just thank continue you. to do what you do. You know, hopefully somebody's coochie might be safe based on this conversation. Come you on, know, we safe and coochies out here. You know what I'm saying? Life life might be safe. But brothers need, we, listen, brothers, man, get, if because sometimes the woman don't know about it. Like the lady, the woman yeah. just said, the brothers bring, introduce it to him. So brothers, sometimes you might have to reach out to Coach Jesse because a lot yeah. of women don't know or they, sometimes they're in denial. So you might have to give a little, you know what I'm saying? Push over there. So we appreciate you, Coach Jesse. And we support the men too. You know, there's ED and a lot of other things out there. We help them too. High blood pressure. But the sisters, they got my heart. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coach Jesse. Please go back to your day. Thank you so much for breaking into your schedule to be a guest on Street Politicians. We can't wait to have you back. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's true blessing.